Hallelujah. How's everybody tonight? Are you blessed and highly favored? Are you blessed and highly flavored? Praise God. This is the night the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it because we have a choice, the power to choose. You know, you're born with power to choose. Although we didn't know what the right thing to choose was, we just chose whatever, right? It was that feel-good life. That's Satan's doctrine. Do what you feel like. Amen. Oh, there are many things that are going on. We are in a time and season that is phenomenal. We've seen events. We see things going on in the world. We see destructions, floods, famines, diseases. We see false doctrines. We see all kinds of things that are just happening. I mean, it's just incredible. Imposters and evil are getting worse. But praise be to God, that means your light's going to shine more. Amen. 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 Remember, Satan's greatest weapon is deception and his power is fear. It's amazing how many people don't understand the arena of demonic forces. And because of that, we are going to talk about a couple things tonight in Hosea chapter 4. Hosea chapter 4, please. We are end time warriors. Amen. Hallelujah. You're not here because of coincidence. You're here because God's trying to get your attention and train us. Remember, these are not Bible studies. These are training sessions. We are, this is a military operation from the eternal realm. This is not about a religious act. Amen. Amen. We have been brought and sent into this world to fulfill a mission. Like I said before, we probably all volunteered. Yeah, I'll go. I'll go. Yeah. And the Lord said, man, remember, as soon as you get born in that room, you're going to forget me. You're going to forget where you came from. And you're going to have to research your identity again. But I'll be waiting for you in that time that you really call on me. I'm going to come and I'm going to restore your identity of who you really were before you came. That's why we're in this world going, who am I? Why am I here? And where am I going? Because you came from somewhere already. Amen. That's why we all like to feel good, because we came from the Most High. Amen. Amen. That's why he's called the Most High, because we came from the presence that is the awesome high you could ever have. <laughs> I tried to get there the wrong way. Cost thousands and thousands, and I still never made it. Amen. Just ended up sick in jail and everything else, you know, <laughs> till he showed up. And when he showed up, I got up. Amen. And I realized that the high and everything I was looking for was him. Amen. And nothing else can fulfill. You, no matter what you do, no matter how much money you make, no matter whatever, no matter how much dope you do, no matter how many people you sleep with, no matter how much sin you do, you will never be fulfilled until you fulfill your mission. Amen. That's all that's to it. You'll be miserable. Now, you may not think you're miserable because you're always looking for something to exchange it. So you, people stay busy. It's amazing to me how many people that uh, are, are, I, I talk to and, I, and they've been supposedly ex-addicts. And, and one of the things they tell me is, yeah, man, I got to stay busy. Well, why do you got to stay busy? Well, because I might use. Well, that's called bondage. Amen. It's called demon management. Amen. And we don't want demon management. We want freedom. Freedom, and only can come through the anointing of the Holy Spirit through Christ Jesus in relationship with the Father. Amen. Hosea 4 and verse 1. Let's speak it together because what you speak is what you eat. You speak light, you eat light. Amen? Hear the word of the Lord, you children of Israel. That means us too. Amen. For the Lord brings a charge against the inhabitants of the land. There is no truth or mercy or what? Knowledge of God in the land. In other words, it's been departed. Isn't that what the battle is right now? Amen. I mean, look what's going on. They're trying to take the, uh, prayer. Remember, they've taken prayer out of school. They've taken down the Ten Commandments. They're trying to remove God from every area and try and put in their own gods, false gods. 
There is no truth or mercy or knowledge of God in the land by swearing and lying, killing and stealing and committing adultery. They break all restraint with bloodshed upon bloodshed. Therefore the land will mourn and everyone who dwells there, there will waste away. With the beasts of the field and the birds of the air, even the fish of the sea will be taken away. Now let no man contend or rebuke another, for your people are like those who contend with the priest. Therefore you shall stumble in the day. The prophet also shall stumble with you in the night, and I will destroy your mother. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. And because you reject knowledge, I will reject you for being a priest for me or being closed. And because you have forgotten the law of your God or this knowledge, I will forget your children. That's wild. That's called an ancestral curse. Amen. He says, the more they increase, the more they sinned against me. I will change their glory into shame. They will eat up the sin of my people and set their heart on their iniquity. And it shall be like people, like priests, and I will punish them for their ways and reward them for their deeds. For they shall eat but not have enough. There will never be a satisfaction. Does everybody get it? <laughs> they shall commit adult harlotry but not increase because they have ceased obeying the Lord. Again, the main thing here is God's people and the world is being destroyed for lack of knowledge of the Lord. By rejecting his knowledge, they reject the first office for me and you to fulfill, and that's called priesthood. And the curse comes down the line, which comes down to the children. He says, I will forget your children. That's why some of us had to go through hell to get to heaven. Amen? They'll never have enough. They'll never be satisfied until they fulfill their mission. Now, you got to grab hold of something here about knowledge. Because knowledge comes in multiple ways. He's talking about eternal knowledge. He's not talking about worldly knowledge. There's, everybody can get worldly knowledge. But not everybody can get eternal knowledge. There's a difference. He said this is the knowledge that they rejected. This is the knowledge that they need to have to maintain to get home. In chapter 6. Verse 1, let's speak it. Come and let us what? Return to the Lord. That means repent. You confess your sins and you turn away from them. Come and let us return to the Lord, for he has torn, but he will what? Heal us. He has stricken, but he will bind us up. After two days, he will revive us, and on the third day, he will raise us up. That we may live in his sight, let us know. Let us pursue the knowledge of the Lord. His going forth is established as the morning. He will come to us like the rain and like the latter and former rain to the earth. Now, again, I want to go back to a couple things here because he's talking about the latter, the former and the latter rain, which we know on September 23rd, there was birth. We saw the, in the heavens the, all the stars and constellations brought a birth. You could see it in Jerusalem. Remember, God speaks even through the heavenlies. That birth was essential. It was a birthing of a new season. Amen? It says he will come to us. And he will come for us also. And according to the rapture, we'll be removed. In the latter and former rain. Again, he's calling a time of repentance. So prior to September, amen, what occurred? We saw the, we've already had the four blood moons that have occurred, which has been fulfilled. We've already had the fulfillment of Jubilee year. And then we had a, a, a what do you call it, a, a, a full eclipse that went through the center of the United States. That shadow that came through was a representation of Passover, a representation of 40 days of repentance so my people would turn away. And, and then on September 23rd, that birth came for double portion. So we are in a season right now, pre preparation for the Messiah's return. Of course, that season could be 
a, a period of time here, a couple of years, maybe three years, four years, whatever it may be. We're just waiting for that seven-year treaty to come. Then we got three and a half years left. So in this in the season of double portion and Messiah's return, this season is a period of time attached to God's time, not man's season. So even though we have four seasons, this is not about man's season, it's about God's season. After September 23rd, birthing of the new season, all hells broke out. Why? It's breaking out to prevent and resist the movement of God in the spirit with lies, bigotry, Fake news, corruption in governments, uh, po politicians. Look, we've had volcanoes, we've had fires, we've had flood, earthquakes, diseases, famines. Look at how much addiction people are dying left and right. There's been massacres and murders. Amen? Amen. There's been false doctrine, false religions and prophets. There's been much abuse, rape all relating to the lack of eternal truth or lack of knowledge of a creator that loves us. That's what the lack is. My people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. Now, knowledge that is understood, eternal knowledge understood becomes truth. That's why many people read the Bible but don't have true interpretation, so it doesn't become truth. It's just knowledge. Knowledge by itself cannot do anything. There must be power behind it in Genesis chapter 2 in other words no matter whatever we're doing it must be backed by something there's a root to something Genesis chapter 2 The ministry of knowledge is essential. It's essential. But again, it's not just knowledge. It's more than that. That's where people are lacking. They're going around thinking everything is just cool, trying to make a living in a survival mode. Have no idea. Thinking that they're good. Having no idea that if they give up that last breath, they're not going to wake up in heaven. They will wake up in hell. This is reality. This is where God says, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge. In verse 15, Genesis chapter 2 and verse 15. It says, and the Lord God took the man who was Adam and put him in the garden of Eden to tend and keep it. And the Lord God commanded the man saying, of the tree of the garden, every tree you may eat freely. But of the tree of the what? Knowledge of what? Good and evil you shall not eat. For in it, the day you eat of it, you shall what? Surely die. So understand that the world, the world is ruled by Satan's kingdom and people are eating off of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. That's why they are dying. This death is not just called a physical, it's eternal separation from God. Because this knowledge brings deception. It doesn't bring truth. So it keeps people in the matrix. Amen? You die in the matrix, you go to hell. You want out of it. Has everybody got it? All right. So people are still eating from the tree of the knowledge of good and evil, which is lust of the flesh, lust of the eyes, and pride of life, which is of the world and not the knowledge of God. It causes destruction. And Proverbs chapter 1. We just had a teaching, I think it was Sunday, called Enemies of the Cross. And this is where people go in the arena called Enemies of the Cross. Because they're still living from themselves and not God. Enemies of the Cross. Why? Because they lack the knowledge. Again, you can have all the knowledge. You can even have the knowledge of it, of the Word of God. But without understanding, it is no good. No good. So people just think it is sometimes another book. But there must be revelation knowledge that comes to me and you, and it only can come by the Spirit of God. 
You know, the word says only the pure in heart will see God. Only the pure in heart will see God. No one else will. In Proverbs chapter 1 and verse 20. Let's speak it. Wisdom calls aloud outside. She raises her voice in the open squares. She cries out in the chief concourse at the openings of the gates in the city. She speaks her words. How long, you simple ones, will you love simplicity? For scorners delight in their scorning and fools hate knowledge. Fools do what? Hate knowledge. Well, what knowledge is this? It's the eternal knowledge. Not temporary knowledge. Temporary knowledge keeps you in a temporary state. Eternal knowledge keeps you in an eternal state. So you're living from the future to the present, not from the past to the present. It's a totally different way of life. He says, verse 23, Turn at my rebuke. Surely I will pour out my spirit on you. I will make my words known to you because I have called you and you refused. I have stretched out my hand and no one regarded because you disdain all my counsel and would have none of my rebuke. I also will laugh at your calamity. I will mock when your terror comes. When your terror comes like a storm and your destruction comes like a whirlwind, when distress and anguish come upon you. Now, have we not had whirlwinds? Those are called hurricanes. God has brought everything under judgment right now. That's why we've had a lot of hurricanes come into this country. Because God is shaking everything. Everything. This country was called to be a witness to the world. It was supposed to be to a place where Israel would be jealous of the United States. So that Israel would get saved. But because the rulers of this country have allowed and promoted fornication, same-sex marriage, abortions, and everything else, judgment has come to this country. In other words, we got to get to a place where we don't approve anything God doesn't approve of. And we only approve of what he approves of. Now we're at a place where we see to what he sees because that's his greatest desire if you're his offspring. Amen? Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Let's go on, verse 28. He says, then they will call on me, but I will not answer. They will seek me diligently, but they will not find me. Because they hated what? Knowledge. Knowledge. They hated eternal truth. And did not choose to the fear of the Lord, which is reverence, honor, and respect. They would have none of my counsel and despise my every rebuke. Therefore, they will eat the fruit of their own way and be filled to full with their own fantasies. For the turning away of the simple will slay them, and the complacency of fools will destroy them. But whoever listens to me will dwell safely and will be secure without fear of evil. Knowledge, again, that is understood as truth. This is called revelation knowledge. Knowledge, it is the knowledge of Jesus, the Father, and the Holy Spirit. It's also knowledge to expose your demonic forces, demons, devils, Satan, fallen angels. Eating from the tree of life is eternal knowledge. And it is interpreted by the Holy Spirit. That's why Jesus said, you can only live. Man cannot live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And he who eats of his flesh and drinks of his blood. Now, of course, his blood is associated with praise and worship. And eating of his flesh is his word. In 2 Timothy chapter 3, Ministry of Knowledge. You know, one of the first things that occurred to me when I had my visitation from the Lord, one of the first things that after my, I was taken to the other side and the blinded in the cloud of glory and this funny language flew out of my mouth and I got as high as I ever thought I was going to ever get. Hallelujah. And I said, if this is death, I want it. <laughs> I thought I was going to explode everywhere. But after, um, a after the cloud lifted from me and the Lord was in front of me, the first words out of his mouth was he said, my Bible is true. I thought, wait, really? He said, yeah, my word is, that's my word, it's true. Because see, I was told that it was nothing but a story. I didn't need stories. I had enough stories and fables in my life. I had enough lies and deception. I wanted the truth. 
But I didn't know that truth was a person. I didn't know it was a person. And his name is Jesus, because Jesus is God. He came in the flesh. God took a part of himself, called him Jesus, called him a son. But he's actually God in the flesh. That's why only God can die for me and you and produce blood that cleanse all mankind. But it, the reality that the word of God, this Bible, was true. I was blown away. I mean, I wasn't, didn't know what to expect, you know, but it was the first things out of his mouth. My word is true. That Bible is true. So nobody's going to tell me no different. I don't care what anybody says or thinks. Did you ever hear the saying, you heard it from the horse's mouth? Amen. Amen. Well, I heard it from the king's mouth. <laughs> Hallelujah. Well, I did hear it from a horse's mouth, but we won't go into that either. <laughs> Hallelujah. Second to talk about confirmation. <laughs> Second Timothy chapter 3. We know the scripture, but we're going to say it again. For but now, but know this, that in the last days, perilous times are, have come. Are we in perilous times? I mean, come on, let's be real. For men will be lovers of what? Themselves. I, I always share we're in a selfie generation. Technology is really interfering with people. They will be lovers of themselves, lovers of money, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient to parents, unthankful, unholy, unloving, unforgiving, slanders, without self-control, brutal despisers of good, traitors, headstrong, haughty, lovers of pleasure rather than lovers of God. And we see that everywhere. They're having a form of godliness, which is some kind of religious thing, but denying its power. And from such people turn away. For of this sort are those who creep into households and make captives of gullible men and women loaded down with sins, led away by various lusts. They are always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the what? Of the truth. Always learning and never able to come to the knowledge of the truth. Now, as Janus and Jabez resist Moses, so did these also resist the truth. Men of corrupt minds disapprove concerning the faith, but they will progress what? No further. In other words, there's limitations. For their folly will be manifested to all, as there also was. But of course, then he says, carefully follow my doctrine and so forth. Here it is learning, but not able to come to the knowledge of the truth. They only... Here, here is the key about this. Because we carry two knowledges, right? We know the knowledge of the world, but we have the eternal knowledge. But you can only serve one. In other words, we know about it, but we don't serve it. We know about the knowledge of the world, but we don't serve it. It serves us. See, the knowledge of the world should be serving you. You don't serve it. Because the rule of this earth is the one that brings that knowledge. Has everybody got it? But there's eternal knowledge that we serve. There's a difference. So he says, the word here says, if you serve two masters, you can't. So if you're serving two masters, the devil will take you out. You will be, and he takes you out by deception. He doesn't come up to you and say, hi, I'm the devil. And, uh, you know, I, there's a couple hooks in your jaw. And, you know, that fornication and lying and cheating and all that other stuff, you're mine. He doesn't tell you those things. He tells you you're good. Go ahead, it's okay. God loves you. Oh, there's no judgment. No, nah, it's okay. And then when you give up your, your, the last breath and he's in front of you and he says, Hi, I'm the father of lies. You're mine. Amen? And, of course, then you have the other ones that haven't made a choice yet. And we've talked about this. I mean, you heard the story about the guy that died, right? He was an atheist. And the devil comes up to him and says, come on. He says, wait a minute, wait a minute. I didn't choose you and I didn't choose Jesus. He says, I'm on the fence. The devil says, I own the fence. Come on. And that was the end of that. Serving two masters. And by serving two masters, what happens is your soul cannot be converted. 
There's a limitation in the conversion of your soul. And your soul is your mind, will, emotions, and imaginations, desires. It stops the process of conversion and allows the enemy to access. And he opens the door, and those doors are permanent until you turn away from it. Repentance will not shut the door. It will cleanse you, but the door will still be open, and then you get contaminated again. Is everybody with me? Yeah. Ministry of knowledge. In John 14, 6, you don't have to go there. He is the what? The way. He's the way of life. Amen. He's the way to a new life. Right? But how do you get to that new life? He says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. The way, the truth, and the life. So the only way to get to that new life is you got to go through him, accepting his way, and accepting the knowledge. Truth. Truth. He is the way, the truth, and the life. So you're not going to reach life without truth. Has everybody got it? And that's where people are deceived. Without truth, you can't reach that eternal life. It's impossible. The way to life is by the knowledge of Christ, which is truth. Not a fairy tale, not fables. It's a reality. And the more you know him, the more you know who you are. And your identity begins to be restored again. And John chapter 1. In verse 1. John 1 and verse 1. In the beginning was the word. word. Now wait a minute. Is the word knowledge? Amen. Oh yeah. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. And the word still is God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were what? Made through him. So all things were made through him. Amen? Now grab hold of this then. That means knowledge is substance. Eternal knowledge is the substance. It's substance. All things were made through him, and without him nothing was made that was made. In him was, light, was life, and the life, uh, and the life was the light of men. And the light shines in darkness, but darkness did not comprehend it. In verse 14, And the word became flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory, the glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth, truth, full of knowledge. Again, the word is God, and it was used to create everything. So the word is substance because the word is knowledge. And it's knowledge. Everybody get it? It's creative. Knowledge substance. Okay, so we see here that so if the word if the if knowledge is substance, it's a parallel. Knowledge is a substance, it's the parallel of substance of material, seen, and unseen. So we have knowledge that's material you can see here. But there's knowledge of material that you can't see. It is substance. So all knowledge represents substance. That's how things are worked with. Everything here is created by knowledge. Amen? Knowledge is the building material that is utilized. So in this, it, when you call the lumber yard to build something, well, somebody had the knowledge to cut the tree down. And they turned it into wood. And then they decided to make a business out of it and all of the other stuff. So you couldn't even build anything without material. And that material is called substance. So knowledge is substance. And without eternal substance, you can't build eternity. You can't build. You can't build a spiritual house. Is everybody okay? Knowledge is the substance used to build. Does everybody got it? 1 Peter 2. 
Now, knowledge understood is called truth. Oh, yes. You may have to go over this a couple times to grab. First Peter chapter 2 and verse 1. Let's speak it. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, which is what? Knowledge, which is also substance. Now, think about this. What is faith? Faith is the substance of things what? Hope for. Why? Because faith is trust in God's word. It's substance. It's knowledge. That you may grow thereby. Why? Because you're being built up. If indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious, coming to him as a living stone rejected indeed by men, but chosen by God and precious. Everyone say, I'm chosen by God. Chosen by God. And I'm precious. Yeah, I'm no matter what my neighbor says. <laughs> you also, as living stones, are being built up a what? Being built up a what? Spiritual house with what? Whoa. Uh, and a holy priesthood. How are you building a spiritual house? You got to have substance to build. It's called knowledge. What is it? Revelation, eternal knowledge. So everybody got it. That's why people are building false spiritual houses. Because the devil comes with all these false religions. And then people are building all of these things. But it isn't eternal. It can't stand. Only eternal substance can establish an eternal house. Oh, glory. You also, living, or li as living stones, are being built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God through Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is also contained in the Scripture, Behold, I lay in Zion a chief cornerstone, elect and precious, and he who believes on him will by no means be put to shame. Now, wait a minute. What's the word believe? Follow. You can't just sit there and say, I believe Jesus. And then go do everything else the world does. Because the word believe means to follow. God knows that. We know that. So if you say you're a believer and not a follower, then you're a liar. And you'll be judged as a liar. Has everybody got it? Verse 7, therefore to you who believe, you who follow, he's precious. But to those who are disobedient and don't follow, they don't give a hoot. The stone which the builders rejected has become a chief cornerstone and a stone of stumbling and a rock of offense. They stumble being disobedient to the what? Word or substance, which is knowledge. To which they also were appointed. Why? Because they cannot build without substance. But you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, his own special people, that you may proclaim the praises of him who called you out of darkness into his marvelous light, who were once not a people of God, but now a people of God, and who had not obtained mercy, but now have obtained mercy. The word is knowledge of Jesus, the substance of faith, the spiritual building of eternal kingdom. And there's a temporary knowledge, which is human understanding so we see that there's a battle here of temporary knowledge versus eternal knowledge it's constant and one of the things the enemy wants to do is constantly exchange or steal your eternal knowledge and place it with temporary knowledge why because the devil builds on substance of lies and deceit and deception it's called temporary knowledge that's how he builds amen that's why there's a lot of people um, they, they can have all the money they, they want, and they're miserable. They're committing suicide and so forth because they're building with the wrong substance. Amen? Amen. Oh, glory. 1 Corinthians 4. Let's 
in verse 1. Somebody there? Let a man so consider us as servants of Christ and stewards of the mysteries of God. Mysteries of God. What are mysteries of God? Are revelation knowledge. Substance. So you and I are stewards. <laughs> stewards of this knowledge. We're stewards of the mysteries of God. In other words, our ministry is also not only the ministry of the spirit because the word spirit means truth. But as the ministry of knowledge, because knowledge understood is truth. Moreover, it is required in stewards that one be found what? Faithful. Wow. One be found what? Faithful. Faithful. Amen. But with me, it is a very small thing that I should be judged by you or by human court. In fact, I do not even judge myself, for I know of nothing against myself, yet I am justified by this. But he who judges me is the Lord. Why? Because he has relationship with the Lord. Therefore, judge nothing before the time until the Lord comes, who will both bring to light the hidden things of darkness and reveal the counsels of the heart. Then each one's praise will come from God. Praise or judgment. Again, we are stewards of the mysteries of God. It's revelation. Knowledge it is substance. Of course, again, I shared about the ministry of the Spirit. So we are in the ministry of truth. Truth is knowledge understood, isn't it? Knowledge is the Word. The Word is Jesus. We are also the ministry of knowledge and the substance of the eternal kingdom. This is the ministry. That's what you're called to. You and I are called to bring forth substance to individuals. Why? So they can build an eternal house and not a temporary house. That way when the wolf comes, he can't blow it down. 2 Corinthians 4. Yes, Satan's substance is nothing but straw. You know, money burns real easy. <laughs> People, can you imagine somebody building a house with money? <laughs> verse 5. Is everybody there? 2 Corinthians 4, verse 5. For we do not preach ourselves, but Christ Jesus the Lord and our, ourselves, your bondservants, for Jesus' sake, for it is God who can't, commanded light to shine out of darkness, who has shown in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. Wow. But we have this treasure in earthen vessels that the excellence of the power may be of God and not of us. Wow. <laughs> so the knowledge of the glory of God is where? In the face of Jesus. 2 Corinthians chapter 2. No, let's go to Ephesians 1 first. Ephesians 1 15. Ephesians 1 15. Let's speak it. Therefore, I also, after I heard of your faith in the Lord Jesus and your love for all the saints, do not cease to give thanks for you, making mention of you in my prayers, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, which would be substance, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that you may know what is the hope of his calling, what are the riches of the glory of his inheritance in his saints, and what is the exceeding greatness of his power towards us who believe according to the working of his mighty power, which he worked in Christ when he raised him from the dead and seated him at the right hand in the heavenly places, far above all the principality and power and might and dominion and, and every name that is named, not only in this age, but also in that which is to come. And he put all things under his feet and gave him to be the head over all things in the church, which is his body, the fullness of him, who fills all and all. Revelation, knowledge of Jesus. All this is where knowledge is. In other words, knowledge is power. Everyone say knowledge, knowledge is, power. is power. 
Knowledge is power. Why? Because for me and you, it's substance. 2 Corinthians 2. Only if it's used correctly. The world uses knowledge to manipulate. In fact, much of the knowledge of the world will puff a person up and become prideful. Eternal knowledge should make you humble. It doesn't puff you up. It makes you humble. Why? Because it releases more of the fear of God. But remember that battle, that battle constant of the temporary knowledge and eternal knowledge. The enemy's always trying to exchange you with you. That's why people become complacent, lazy, and compromising. They begin to compromise certain things. And they begin to exchange eternal knowledge, that substance, for temporary. And then they begin, the first thing that the enemy comes to do is to steal your identity. If you haven't established one yet, then you're in trouble. Amen? And it's not a worldly identity, it's an eternal identity. 2 Corinthians 2.14, is everybody there? Let's speak it. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through, and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge. Through who? Through us. He diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. So no matter where you go, you smell. But it's good. You don't stink. I didn't say you stunk. Because <laughs> you're carrying the presence of God. People don't even get it. You'd be around and they get all irritated. Because the demons in them are freaking out, you know. They just can't handle it. You know? So you release a fragrance. It says fragrance. Fragrance is nice smelling. <laughs> <laughs> glory thank you Jesus get me out of that one hallelujah <laughs> is everybody there Amen. where the heck are we oh here we are verse 15 for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing to the one we are the aroma of death leading to death hello and to the other the aroma of life leading to life and who is sufficient for these things? For we are not, as so many, pleading the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God, we speak in the sight of God in Christ. That's why we have the ministry of knowledge. We're releasing that fragrance. Romans 1. The fragrance of his substance is his character. Because knowledge is always referring to the character of Christ. That's the substance. So when you're speaking the word, you're actually forming Christ right in front of you. That substance, he's being, he's coming. He's coming right in front of you. He's, you're forming him right in front of you. And he's dispatching his angels, not only on his behalf, but on your behalf. That's why speaking the word is essential. That's what people lack. Although sit down and read it and go to sleep. Because that's what the enemy loves to do. You pick up the word. You got to battle that stupid spirit, right? Put you to sleep. It's a deaf and dumb spirit. Romans chapter 1. Is everybody there? In verse 28. Romans chapter 1 and verse 28. Hallelujah. And ver, let's speak it together. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do the things which are not fitting. Why? They rejected his knowledge. They said, okay, go ahead and do what you want to do. Go by, live how you feel and see what the end result is. 
being filled with all unrighteousness and sexual immorality, wickedness and covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil-mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undeserving, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, unmerciful, who knowing the righteous judgment of God, so they're not stupid, they know, but they just reject, they refuse. That those who practice such things are deserving of what? Yeah. Death. And not only do the same, but also approve of those who practice such things. This is wild. So they did not return, retain eternal substance, which is the knowledge understood or called truth. When that is manifesting in your life, you will always produce what we call the fruit of righteousness righteousness there's a difference between a fruit of good and evil compared to righteousness only by eating from the tree of life which is the substance the knowledge of christ jesus can you produce the fruit of righteousness and only by practicing righteousness allows you into the eternal heavens it, your own, only through practice of righteousness will you make it home. Without that, you will be destitute and separated from God. That's how God judges. His throne is righteousness and justice. You must match that throne to get home. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Second Peter 1. Second Peter chapter one. The ministry of knowledge. Second Peter chapter one. Why? Because we are in the ministry of the Spirit, aren't we? But the Spirit is truth. And knowledge understood is called truth. But now the reality of substance. That's why it's called the sword of the spirit. Why? Because it becomes substance. It becomes a sword. It can't become a sword without substance. Second Peter 1. In verse 2. Let's speak. Grace and peace be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God. Be multiplied to you in the knowledge of God and of Jesus our Lord. And his divine power has been given to us all things that pertain to life and godliness through what? The knowledge of him who called us by the glory and virtue. So you see divine power, amen? Through the what? Knowledge. By which have been given to us exceedingly and great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature. Now the divine nature will produce the fruit of righteousness. Having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust, but also for this very reason, giving all diligence, add to your faith virtue to virtue knowledge, to knowledge self-control, to self-control, perseverance, or perseverance, godliness, to godliness, brotherly kindness, and to brotherly kindness, love. For these things are yours and abound. You will be neither barren nor unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus Christ. But he who lacks these things is short-sighted, even to blindness, and is forgotten that he was cleansed from his old sins. Therefore, brethren, be even more diligent to make your call and election sure. For if you do these things, you will never stumble. For so a what? An entrance. Entrance where? To eternal home. Will be supplied to you abundantly into the everlasting kingdom of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So you see through this substance of this knowledge, there's divine power. Divine character, and then that divine nature, all of these things we have, we, we keep losing sight just thinking the word is a word, but it's not a word. This is eternal substance from God Almighty to perform things and change things and create things in this realm 
for me and you. That's where he says we are more than conquerors. Amen? He using us is greater than he using the world. Well, then let's get him in here. And how do you get him in here? Speak him in. Amen? And I'm going to close at Mark 16. Oh, yes. See, this is where there's a lot of people that know the word but don't know him. Because they don't realize that the reality of truth is a person. This is, this is should, the word of God is supposed to bring us to him. Not bring us, not, not separate us from him. It's supposed to bring us to him. When my, had the, after my visitation from the Lord, I didn't want to read the word, even though he told me it was the truth. He told me my, the Bible is true. Because I saw so many people carry a Bible around were hypocrites. I didn't want to turn out like them. And so he'd tell me, I want you to read the word. I'd say, no. Why do I need to read the word of God when I know you? You just tell me what to do. I'll do it. Just tell me what to do, how to do it, where to do it. I'll do it. He said, it's not going to work that way. And it would seem like the Bible would come closer to me every time I'd go to prayer. And I'd push it away. And he'd keep coming closer. We were battling over this. And then finally I gave in. I said, all right. He says, listen, I want you to teach what's out of this word. I said, well, I don't know how to teach. He says, I know. <laughs> That's why I'm telling you, come on. <laughs> I will give you revelation. I will put meat in a bottle. I will feed you meat in a bottle. Well, you won't even know it. And he did. And the Holy Spirit, who I called Buddy at the time, I used to wait for him to show up and we'd go over. He taught me how to read and everything. Only through the Holy Spirit can you interpret. You try to interpret in your natural mind, poof, brings confusion. That'd be just not another word. This is not just another word. It's words. That's why Jesus said the spirit gives life and the letter kills. Amen? That's what he told them. He says, look, you search the scriptures <laughs> thinking you have eternal life. He told it to them. You search the scriptures thinking you have eternal life, but you won't come to me and get it. That's why he says, who do they say that I am and who do you say that I am? He wants you as a personal relationship. He wants you to know his voice. He wants you to know what pleases. He wants you to see what he sees. It's his greatest delight. Mark 16, 16. Is everybody there? Oh, glory. And he who what? He who, what's the word believe mean? Follows. And is baptized will be saved. But he who does not believe will be condemned. Amen. So if you're not willing to follow, you're going to hell. It's real simple. And these signs will follow those who believe. In my name. Wait a minute. In his name. Is his name substance? Oh, yes. Oh, yes. His name is substance. In my name, they will do what? Cast out demons. Why is that the first thing? Because that's where the battle is. That's the fight. Demonic forces, fear is a demon. Anxiety, oppression, stress is a demon. Those are all demonic forces. And they enter in by cooperating with them. Addiction is a demon. Loss is a demon. All of these things, people have no idea how quickly it takes one decision and one choice to open yourself up to a demon. Once that spirit comes in, he's got permanent access until repentance Turn away in removal. If that thing's not removed, he'll stay there. He'll go dormant until he needs a meal. And the next thing you know, you're doing the same thing that you didn't want to do before. They get fed and they must, they're looking, they get fed by humans and they get fed by human emotion. In my name, they will cast out demons. They will speak with new tongues. Hello, that's baptism of the Holy Spirit with power. You get a heavenly language. They will take up serpents. 
Now, we're not going to go look for a serpent. If I see a snake, his head's off. And if they drink anything deadly, it will by no means hurt them. That doesn't mean you're going to go siphon your car and challenge God. Amen. Because you're going to die. And they will lay hands on the sick and they will what? Recover. Why? Because his name is substance. And when you have the understanding of this, see, because the demons know what you think. They know whether you're a wimp or not. They know. They know whether you know the truth. They know whether you are in boldness. They know whether you believe, truly believe that he is the Christ and he is the power that lives in you. See, so you must feed your spirit, man, with substance. It's food. The more you feed your spirit, man, with the substance, the more you become like him. Amen? Isn't that his desire? That we become like him? In character. Amen? With the fruits of righteousness. We have the ministry of the spirit because we have the ministry of knowledge. It's essential. The word is substance. When it's spoken, because it must be backed by the spirit, it becomes substance. Amen? Is everybody cool? Amen. Praise God. Father, we thank you for your word. We are honored and blessed. Lord, let this revelation knowledge be so imparted in us and protected by the blood of Christ. Holy Spirit, you got something tonight for us to be counseled, corrected, directed, and convicted. So use it. We commit to you to use it. We commit to you, Holy Spirit, to do whatever you got to do to keep us in divine order. Lord, we desire that eternal way home. But first of all, Lord, we want to know you even more. Not only through your word, but through visitation, through revelation, through experiences. We ask, Lord, that you'll continue to manifest yourself, that we may see you and know you and behold your glory. Now I pray blessing over each and every one here tonight. I ask that you visit them in dreams and visions and bring them reality of the substance and the power of your word, that they may be partakers of your divine nature, divine power, and divine favor in Jesus' name. Amen. Everybody said amen. amen. Praise God. Be blessed and stay dressed with the glory.